finally, one more point that Senator Boxer raised when she said, well, but the, the, the U.S. is the largest emitter, but then China comes over, and there are people, the excuse used by the U.S. and Australia for not joining in Kyoto was that whatever we do is going to be swamped eventually uh, by emissions in the developing world. And what they forgot to tell you is that we had a Victorian Industrial Revolution. We had sweatshops, dirty coal burning, internal combustion engines. We got rich. As our children started getting asthma from air pollution, we spent money taking these things out. And we're actually transitioning toward a more clean environment because of health. Now climate comes along after that. Meanwhile, we're a factor of 10 per capita greater emitters uh, than China or India. How can you ask them to do exactly the same thing? Level playing field day after tomorrow when the playing field hasn't been level for a century. Nevertheless, a ton of carbon emitted in Beijing does exactly the same thing to hurt species as a ton emitted in Boston. So the key is, yes, everybody has to play, but at first, at least, not necessarily everybody has to pay. And getting the cooperative solution involves dealing also with the fairness of the solution and helping the developing world to leapfrog. I'll finish with the example of somebody's cell phone rang, right? There you go, we got one. How did we communicate with each other? Again, Victorian Industrial Revolution, we strung copper all over our continents in Europe and here in Australia and Canada and Japan. So I was in China not long ago, and I wanted to go out to the countryside, and there was a very nice set of villages that did not have transmission lines running between them, yet people had good shops, and they were healthy, and they, would, they looked economically well off, and they were all talking on their cell phones with a cell tower in the corner, unfortunately driven by diesel generators, should have been a fuel cell. But in any case, there they were. They had already leapfrogged over the Victorian Industrial Revolution to high tech. So the key is, how do you set up the cooperative, interactive, public-private partnerships, not just domestically, which we must do, but also internationally, to help them leapfrog? Because they're not going to listen to us with a factor of 10 more emissions per capita when we say, you must do it just because we're doing it. We have to help them through that transition. And I actually think it's pretty good for business, because if businesses that are here who bring technologies to the developing world and then they learn how to do it there, they can actually bring that skill back here. So it's looking for the single most important thing, learning to do well by doing good. And when we have partnerships that do that, instead of attacking each other, I think there's a very, very good reason to think that we haven't wasted the last 25 years and that we're now poised to make a real difference. Thank you.